Section 5.4, Simple and Compound Interest. This video will help you calculate simple interest, calculate compound interest, and use the EZ Financial Calculator app. Calculate simple interest. We'll start with some definitions in here. So when people invest money, the initial investment is called the principal. And in a simple interest investment, interest is earned on only the principal investment over a period of time. So here's our formula for simple interest. I for the interest rate. P is the original principal, borrowed or invested. Um, okay, And here is our simple interest formula. I is the interest earned. P is the principal, the initial investment. R is the interest rate. And T is the time. So now the annual percentage rate, or APR, which a lot of times is how uh, money is invested or borrowed, the annual percentage rate is the interest rate charged or slash earned throughout the entire year. So this is both for loaning out money and for investing money. So the period interest rate is the interest charged and earned over a given period. So APR is our annual rate, meaning going over one year. Now, sometimes we'll break interest down in terms of a period. So we could calculate interest in terms of a lot of times, and most of the time it's a monthly interest rate. Or you could even do a daily or weekly interest rate based on the APR. And all you need to do to find the period interest rate is take the annual percentage rate and divide it by the number of periods. All right, let's take a look at an example that will help you understand this. So Kia borrowed $11,000 from her uncle to help pay for last year's college. One year later, she owed her uncle $11,330. If she hasn't made any payments on the loan, what simple interest rate is her uncle charging her for the loan? Well, all right. So here is our simple interest formula. Okay, so we're just going to en enter this information now. So let's start over here with the principal borrowed. That was $11,000. We don't know the interest rate, so we're just going to leave that as R. We do know the time was one year. So it's going to be times one there. Now we want to write the interest over here. And notice $11,330 is not the interest that she was charged. $330 was the interest that she's charged. So what we're going to do is you know, basically divide both sides by 11,000. And let's see, 330. Divided by 11,000 is 0.3. So we would say uh, the interest rate is 3%. Take a look at another example now. Example two, the simple interest rate on Felicia's credit card is 24% APR in simple interest. If the principal is 3600 how much interest is she being charged for one month? All right, so notice 24% APR, but we're talking about one month here. So that's 24% 20%, over the course of a year. So the first thing we want to do is figure out the, the period interest rate. And so we're going to take 24% and divide that by 12, because there's 12 months in a year. So we're splitting this 24% up over 12 months. So that's going to give us 2% each month in period interest rate. Now we want to go ahead and use the formula to find out how much she's going to get charged. So the interest she's going to get charged, the principal, which is 3600 uh, times the interest rate, which in this case is 2%, so that's 0 0.02. And then the time, well, she's only being charged here for one month. So that time is still going to be just one. So the interest charge then is just going to be 3600 times 0 0.02. And so that'll give us uh, $72. Go ahead and pause your video player and answer practice question three when you hit play. Go ahead and pause your video player now and answer practice question three. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Chantel borrowed $165 to buy books for her chemistry class. She was charged 5% APR in simple interest. How much interest is she going to get charged if she pays the loan back at the end of three months? Okay, let's see. So she's getting charged 5% APR. And we're breaking this down to a monthly interest rate because we're at the end of three months here. The end of three months there. 
So we want to first take this 5% and divide it by 12. That's going to give us how much interest each month. So that gives us 0.42 basically percent each month. Now that still is a percent. I'm going to have to change that in a decimal in a second when I go to calculate that. But 0.42% but is what she gets charged each month. So now we're trying to figure out how much interest she's going to get charged. She borrowed $165. Uh, our interest rate now, I want to enter this as a decimal, so that's going to be 0 0.0042. And then the time in this case is three months. So we broke it down to how much interest each month. So this is three months, so I want to multiply here times three. So I'll go ahead and multiply that out. 165 times point. 0, 0.0042 times 3. So the interest she gets charged here is 2.079. So I would want to, so let me show you what the number was here. 2079. But I want to round that to the nearest cent here. So that's going to be $2.08. Okay, go ahead and pause your video player now and answer practice question four. Then hit play to see how you did. Akira bought a new kitchen, bought new kitchen appliances with no money down loan from a store that charges a monthly simple interest rate. If the appliances cost $9,500 and she chooses no payments for a year, she will be charged $3,420 in interest at the end of the first year. What is the APR for this loan? And then also, what interest rate is she getting charged per month? All right, so let's see. So we know the interest she's going to get charged. So here's our formula, I equals PRT. The interest here is 3420 The principal is 9500 The interest rate is unknown, but the time here is one year at the end of the first year. So notice I can just go times one there. So basically, I have 9500R equals 3,420. So I'm just going to divide both sides by 9,500. And I'll solve for R. So 3,420 divided by 9,500. Zero, zero. So when I do that division, I get this 0.36. That means the interest rate then is 36% simple interest. Now we also want to know if she's getting charged 36% interest per year, what interest rate is she getting charged per month? So we're just going to take 36% and divide it by 12, and we'll get 3% each month. And I also want to say 36%. Go ahead and pause your video player again and answer practice question 5. Then hit play to see how you did. So $10,000 is invested at 6% simple interest per year. 6% uh, annual percentage rate is how much per month? Well, we're just going to take 6 and divide it by 12. 6% divided by 12. That looks like uh, half a percent, so 0.5% each month. 0.5% each month. Use this period interest rate to fill in the chart. So basically what we're going to do here is we're going to take, okay, $10,000, 0.5% each month. And so 0.5% looks like this is a decimal. So 10,000 times 0 0.005 gives us $50. So the ending balance then is going to be 10,000 plus the 50. So 10,050. Now, the next month, we're getting charged interest. But again, only on that initial investment, only on the $10,000 that we've borrowed here. Or sorry, that we've invested. So we're only going to earn $10,000 on this amount we've only earn interest on what we've invested here. So we're going to take 10000 again times 5%, and we'll get $50 again. So then we would be at uh, $10,100. Now we're going to take 10000 times 5%, or sorry, 0.5% again, and it's going to come out to 50 bucks. And so then I'm going to have 10150 Hopefully now you're starting to recognize the pattern. We only are earning this half a percent on $10,000 each month, so we're always going to be earning $50. So this is going to be 50. This is going to be 50. Use the pattern in the interest rate 
to determine the balance after 36 months. So notice each month we're earning $50. $50, $50, $50. So all we got to do here is take our $10,000 at the end of 36 months. I'm going to take $50 each month times 36 months, and that's going to give us uh, $1,800. So at the end of three years, I would have $10,000 plus $1,800. So I would have $1,100. Sorry, $11,800 at the end of 36 months. Let's take a look at a definition of compound interest. So interest that is accumulated over a period of time is called accrued interest. So as over a period of time, we earn this interest on our investment. That's called accrued interest. In a compound interest investment, interest is earned on the principal investment and the accrued interest. So both the principal and the accrued interest. So now let's take a look at that same initial investment that we looked at in practice problem five, except this time we're going to look at earning interest on the interest. So go ahead and pause your video player now and fill in this table here. And when you're done, hit play to see how you did. All right, practice question six. So we've still got the same 6% interest, and it's compounded monthly, which means we're going to calculate it each month. So we're going to take 6%, just like we did last time, divide by 12 and we're going to get 0.5 percent. So that's 0.5 percent each month. So now we're going to come down here to our chart. At the first month we're going to earn this half a percent only on ten thousand dollars. So it's going to be the same as, as the first month of simple interest which is fifty dollars. So now we've got in our account here ten thousand fifty dollars. The difference with compound interest now is that we are going to calculate interest uh, we're going to earn interest on $10,050, not just the $10,000 anymore. So $10,050 times this half a percent now gives us $5,025 in the second month. So now our overall balance is $10,125. When we come to the next one now, we're going to take $10,100.25 and earn interest on that amount. So let's, when we multiply that out, we're going to get $50.50. So I'm adding that $50.50 plus the amount I had before that interest, which was $10,125. And that's going to give us then a total here of $101.50.75. So now we're at one a uh, $10,150.75. So when we get the table filled out, as you can see as you're filling out the table here, we keep earning this same interest rate, but that interest, we keep earning that interest on more and more money. So compound interest is going to give us more money than a simple invest, uh, interest investment. So while we could calculate compound interest in the table like the one we just did, the compound interest formula makes this a lot easier to do these calculations. And so here's our compound interest formula. A is our account balance. P, again, is our principal investment. R is our interest rate, N is the number of times it gets compounded, and then N times time as our exponent there. So let's take a look at example 7 here to show us how to use a compound interest formula. So to calculate this, we've got $10,000 invested at 6% for 3 years. Alright, so let's see, the amount we're going to get is going to be the principal. $10,000 times 1 plus our interest rate, which was 6%, and we're going to turn that into a decimal, so 0 0.06. N is the number of times it gets compounded, and it's compounded monthly, which means 12 times a year, so that's going to be 12. And then 12 for this N, and then times time is going to be 3. So when we calculate this, we want to make sure that we're not rounding any values till we get to the end. So here's how we want to calculate that. We're going to do $10,000, 1 plus, we're going to get an answer for this and an answer for that. So 0 0.06 divided by 12, we already know that. That's going to give us 0 0.005. 12 times, 12 times 3 will give us 36. Now, Okay, 
So we go ahead and add the 1 and the 0 0.005 together to get 1.005 to the 36th power. Now we are ready to do this calculation. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take 1.005 to the 36th power. So you're either going to have this on your calculator, x to the y, or a little hat. Either one of those will take that to the power. So I will go 1.005. My calculator has x to the y, so I hit x to the y, and then 36 power, and then I hit equals. And so it gives me this 1.19 and a large decimal number after that. Um, I don't want to round that number. I want to keep that exact number in my calculator and then go times 10,000. Because rounding that number can significantly change the results here. So let's see. We're going to put a dollar sign on this since it's money. I'll get $11,966.81 when I do that calculation. Let's go ahead and pause your video player now and answer practice question 8. All right, question eight. Compare the account balances after 36 months for the simple interest account and the compound interest account. So we compare the account balances. In the simple interest case, we have $10,000, $10,303.77. In the compound interest, we have 11,966.81. So you can see compound interest is, is making us quite a bit more money than simple interest. So explain why the compound interest. Okay. So here's the reason why. Compound interest account earns on both the initial investment and the interest it's already earned. The simple interest account only earns money on the original principal. So the simple interest account always earns the same amount each month, whereas the compound continues to build and earns interest on the... Go ahead now and pause your video player now and answer practice question 9. All right, question nine. How much money is an account with a principal investment of $4,500 invested for five years, 4% APR when it's compounded monthly? All right, so let's set this up. We got 4,500 times one plus our interest rate, which would be 0 0.04. Uh, it's compounded monthly, so that means 12 times a year. And then up here I'd have 12 times, how many years? Five years, so 12 times five. So we want to get this all set up for our calculator. So let's see. The first thing I do is I'll take 0 0.04 and divide it by 12. Okay. And then I'm going to add 1 to that. So I get that answer. 0 0.04 divided by 12. And then plus 1 gives me 1.003 repeating. Now, I don't want to round this in my calculator. I want to now get this answer up here so 12 times 5 is 60 so leaving this 1.03 repeating in my calculator now I want to take that to the 60th power so x to the y to the 60th power and then I'm going to take that answer times 4500 and so I'm going to earn 5494.48 four, so 5,494 uh, and 48 cents. Now, you want to get this answer accurately. And the way you do that is you don't round until you get to the very end. So we don't want to round this any of these numbers in here. I'm going to wait right till the end. So when it comes to calculating interest, when payments are involved, the calculations get very complex. So what we're going to do here is we are going to use a phone app, the Easy Financialator financial calculator app and so the, what we want to do is we want to go to the app store on your on your smartphone and you want to search easy financial calculator and you're gonna see this blue icon there's lots of them and they're all good but this is the one we're gonna use right here this little blue icon with the money go ahead and download that thing it's free and then once we, once it downloads and tap it and open it up and then we can go down here and use it to do some of these practice questions 10 and 11 when you've downloaded it and you do practice questions 10 and 11, then go ahead and hit play and see how you did on those two practice questions. Okay, so once you download the app, you should have a lot of different um, calculators here, basically, lots of different ones. And so we're going to use, the first thing we're going to use is this easy loan calculator. And so you see on there, loan calculator, so you click that one, it's got a little house with two little green um, money things on there 
And so the loan amount, you can see that goes right in there, $80,000. So we're going to type in $80,000. The interest rate, uh, and notice in here it's given as a percent, so we enter it as a percent. So we'd say 4.5%. We wouldn't want to change that to a decimal in the phone. And then the loan term is going to be for 30 years. So we'll put 30 in there for years and hit calculate. And so to determine the monthly payment, that's what we're trying to figure out, it's the monthly payment. And so the monthly payment here is going to be 405.35. All right. And again, now we're going to use the easy loan calculator to determine the monthly payment on an $80,000 house. The only thing we're going to change now is we're going to do a 15-year mortgage. So all I have to do, I don't have to clear everything, I just go back up under the loan terms and hit now 15 and then hit calculate. And so let's see here, we're going to get then 611.99. So a little bit more, a little bit more than $200 more for a 15-year mortgage. Okay. Now the question is, how much money in interest will you save if you finance for 15 years instead of 30 years? So notice part of this calculation here will tell you the interest that you're going to pay for this loan. And so on the 15-year loan, um, total interest paid is going to be $30,000,158.20. So $30,000,158.20. Let's go back up and I'll... Enter the interest for now in the 30-year mortgage. So 30 years. Calculate. Here I'm going to pay $65,926. So that's quite a difference then. So $65,926 minus 30,158.2. 20. So you are going to pay thirty-five. So you will save thirty-five thousand dollars, thirty-five thousand seven hundred sixty-eight eighty by choosing. 15 year mortgage and so notice it's only it's a little over $200 every month to pay extra to get a 15 year mortgage over a 30 year mortgage but notice if you can swing that here you can save $35,000 you know over $35,000 all right let's take a look now at practice question 13 I think what we're going to do here is I'll do part A, we'll do that together, and then part B, we'll let you do that one on your own. So for practice question 13, we're going to use the time value money calculator. And on your app, it's the very one at the top. So go ahead and click that very one at the top. You see you've got a lot of boxes we can fill in there, and we're going to fill those in now. So let's read this problem. So you probably spend money on something each day, week, or month that is non-necessity. For example, a $3.50 cup of coffee each day will add up to quite a bit of money over time. Instead of spending that money, save it in a stock index fund that earns, let's say, 7.5% compounded monthly. After 45 years, how much will those cups of cup sorry, how much will those cups of coffee be worth? All right. So here's what we have. In our, in our phone app here now, we want to start with the present value. And the present value is just zero because we're just starting today and we haven't invested any money into this account yet. Now the payments that we're going to make are the price of the cup of coffee. So that's $3.50. So under payment, you want to go ahead and push 3.5 or 3.50 for the payment. Future value, we want to leave that blank because that's the one we're going to calculate in a second. The interest rate, you want to come down under the interest rate, and we want to put 7.5% interest in there and enter that as 7.5 because the, the way we enter this is the actual interest rate. Now, the periods, that's going to be a little tricky to calculate. Notice the compounding here on the Easy app can only happen monthly. So according to our Easy app, we can only do the smallest we can do here is compounded monthly. So we need to figure out 
how much is going to get invested. Yeah. So this is going to change some things a little bit here. So compounded monthly. First, let's figure out how many times this thing is going to get compounded in 45 years. So let's see. We got uh, 45 years times 12. That's going to tell us how many times this thing is going to get compounded. So 45 times 12. That's going to give us 540 periods. But notice, this period, each of these periods is a month. So we're going to have to go back up to our payment and make that payment from uh, daily, which was $3.50. $3 we want to turn that into a monthly payment because we want the compounding to match the payments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take three fifty, dollars uh, and let's see, maybe times, times 30 days, kind of an average month there. So I'll take three fifty dollars times 30 days, and I'll get uh, so over 30 days I'll take 350 times 30 days and I'm gonna get a hundred and five dollars so basically a hundred five dollars a month we got 540 periods so let's go ahead and enter that in so go back up to your um, payment now and change that from 3.5 $3.50 let's change that to hundred and five dollars a month and the periods now we're going to have 540 periods and so you have this all filled in and now what you want to do is on the right hand side there you want to hit the FV which is the future value button so I'm going to go ahead and hit that future value button and it's giving me this that's going to be 469,000 38 dollars and 25 cents so basically, throughout the course of a lifetime or your working lifetime, if you didn't have that cup of coffee and you invested it, you could save almost $500,000. Go ahead now and pause your video player and answer practice question B. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. So again, let's use 30 days in the month if you have to do any sort of monthly calculations. Okay. So my kind of vice here is soda, and I like to drink soda. So I usually have one a day, and usually it costs me about $1.25 each day. So I'm figuring 30 days, that's going to be $37.50 each month. So let's see. I would invent her on my TVM calculator. I'd say present value is zero. My payment for each month is going to be $37.50. Uh, the annual interest rate here again is 7.5 and then the periods I'm gonna have well we're gonna have the same thing we had before which is 12 periods each year times uh, 45 years so we're gonna get 540 periods again in 45 years so 540 and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit the future value button and for mine with this soda, it was 167,513 and 66 cents. So if I save that money over the course of 45 years, I'd have close to $200,000 in my account.